Thought Vibration, or The Law of Attraction in the Thought World. Book by William Walker Atkinson. Narrated by Andrew. Originally published in 1906. This is a great audiobook production created for research, study, and discussion purposes. Chapter 12. Developing New Brain Cells. Undesirable states of feeling, we are not the creatures of our emotions, the majority of the race so governed to a great degree, man the real master of his emotions, the development of new. Brain cells, the disuse of old brain cells with undesirable manifestations, the brain, the organ and instrument of the mind, are tendencies. Temperaments and predispositions, the millions of unused brain cells, mental attitudes acquired or discarded at will, the mind clears the way for thoughts good for the individual. Interposes resistance to those which are harmful. One positive thought will counteract a number of negative thoughts, holding the thought. How to cultivate a certain habit of action, ridding oneself of a mental trait. I have spoken of the plan of getting rid of undesirable states of feeling by driving them out. But a far better way is to cultivate the feeling or emotion directly opposed to the one you wish to eradicate. We are very apt to regard ourselves as the creatures of our emotions and feelings and to fancy that these feelings and emotions are we, but such is far from being the truth. It is true that the majority of the race are slaves of their emotions and feelings and are governed by them to a great degree. They think that feelings are things that rule one and from which one cannot free himself, and so they cease to rebel. They yield to the feeling without question, although they may know that the emotion or mental trait is calculated to injure them, and to bring unhappiness and failure instead of happiness and success. They say, we are made that way, and let it go at that. The new psychology is teaching the people better things. It tells them that they are masters of their emotions and feelings, instead of being their slaves. It tells them that brain cells may be developed that will manifest along desirable lines and that the old brain cells that have been manifesting so unpleasantly may be placed on the retired list and allowed to atrophy from one of use. People may make themselves over and change their entire natures. This is not mere idle theory, but is a working fact which has been demonstrated by thousands of people and which is coming more and more before the attention of the race. No matter what theory of mind we entertain, we must admit that the brain is the organ and instrument of the mind in our present state of existence, at least. And that the brain must be considered in this matter. The brain is like a wonderful musical instrument, having millions of keys, upon which we may play innumerable combinations of sounds. We come into the world with certain tendencies, temperaments, and predispositions. We may account for these tendencies by heredity, or we may account for them upon theories of pre-existence, but the facts remain the same. Certain keys seem to respond to our touch more easily than others. Certain notes seem to sound forth as the current of circumstances sweeps over the strings. And certain other notes are less easily vibrated. But we find that if we but make an effort of the will to restrain the utterance of some of these easily sounded strings, they will grow more difficult to sound. And less liable to be stirred by the passing breeze. And if we will pay attention to some of the other strings that have not been giving forth a clear tone, we will soon get them in good working order. Their notes will chime forth clear and vibrant and will drown the less pleasant sounds. We have millions of unused brain cells awaiting our cultivation. We are using but a few of them, and some of these we are working to death. We are able to give some of these cells a rest by using other cells. The brain may be trained and cultivated in a manner incredible to one who has not looked into the subject. Mental attitudes may be acquired and cultivated changed and discarded, at will. There is no longer any excuse for people manifesting unpleasant and harmful mental states. We have the remedy in our own hands. We acquire habits of thought, feeling, and action by repeated use. We may be born with a tendency in a certain direction, or we may acquire tendencies by suggestions from others. Such as the examples of those around us, suggestions from reading, listening to teachers. We are a bundle of mental habits. Each time we indulge in an undesirable thought or habit, the easier does it become to repeat that thought or action. And the oftener we give forth a certain desirable thought or perform a desirable action, the easier does it become for us to repeat that thought or action. Mental scientists are in the habit of speaking of desirable thoughts or mental attitudes as positive and of the undesirable ones as negative. There is a good reason for this. 
The mind instinctively recognizes certain things as good for the individual to which it belongs, and it clears the path for such thoughts, and interposes the least resistance to them. They have a much greater effect than an undesirable thought possesses, and one positive thought will counteract a number of negative thoughts. The best way to overcome undesirable or negative thoughts and feelings is to cultivate the positive ones. The positive thought is the strongest plant, and will in time starve out the negative one by withdrawing from it the nourishment necessary for its existence. Of course, the negative thought will set up a vigorous resistance at first, for it is a fight for life with it. In the slang words of the time, it sees its finish if the positive thought is allowed to grow and develop. And, consequently, it makes things unpleasant for the individual until he has started well into the work of starving it out. Brain cells do not like to be laid on the shelf any more than does any other form of living energy, and they rebel and struggle until they become too weak to do so. The best way is to pay as little attention as possible to these weeds of the mind, but put in as much time as possible watering. Caring for and attending to the new and beautiful plants in the garden of the mind. For instance, if you are apt to hate people, you can best overcome the negative thought by cultivating love in its place. Think love and act it out as often as possible. Cultivate thoughts of kindness and act as kindly as you can to everyone with whom you come in contact. You will have trouble at the start, but gradually love will master hate and the latter will begin to droop and wither. If you have a tendency toward the blues, cultivate a smile and a cheerful view of things. Insist upon your mouth wearing upturned corners and make an effort of the will to look upon the bright side of things. The blue devils will set up a fight, of course, but pay no attention to them. Just go on cultivating optimism and cheerfulness. Let bright, cheerful and happy be your watchword and try to live it out. These recipes may seem very old and time-worn, but they are psychological truths and may be used by you to advantage. If you once comprehend the nature of the thing, the affirmations and auto-suggestions of the several schools may be understood and taken advantage of. You may make yourself energetic instead of slothful, active instead of lazy, by this method. It is all a matter of practice and steady work. New thought people often have much to say about holding the thought, and, indeed, it is necessary to hold the thought in order to accomplish results. But something more is needed. You must act out the thought until it becomes a fixed habit with you. Thoughts take form in action, and in turn actions influence thought. So by acting out certain lines of thought, the actions react upon the mind and increase the development of the part of the mind having close relation to the act. Each time the mind entertains a thought, the easier becomes the resulting action, and each time an act is performed, the easier becomes the corresponding thought. So you see the thing works both ways, action and reaction. If you feel cheerful and happy, it is very natural for you to laugh. And if you will laugh a little, you will begin to feel bright and cheerful. Do you see what I am trying to get at? Here it is, in a nutshell. If you wish to cultivate a certain habit of action, begin by cultivating the mental attitude corresponding to it. And as a means of cultivating that mental attitude, start in to act out or go through the motions of the act corresponding to the thought. Now, see if you cannot apply this rule. Take up something that you really feel should be done, but which you do not feel like doing. Cultivate the thought leading up to it. Say to yourself, I like to do so and so, and then go through the motions cheerfully, remember. And act out the thought that you like to do the thing. Take an interest in the doing, study out the best way to do it, put brains into it, take a pride in it, and you will find yourself doing the thing with a considerable amount of pleasure and interest, you will have cultivated a new habit. If you prefer trying it on some mental trait of which you wish to be rid, it will work the same way. Starting to cultivate the opposite trait and think it out and act it out for all you are worth. Then watch the change that will come over you. Don't be discouraged at the resistance you will encounter at first, but sing gaily, I can and I will, and get to work in earnest. The important thing in this work is to keep cheerful and interested. If you manage to do this, the rest will be easy. For more audiobook like this, hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get notified when we post a new audiobook. Thanks for listening.